Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing tangents of circles problems in Khan Academy. This is a tutorial to help you with tangents, circles, a geometry concept. Let's get started. Angle A is circumscribed about circle O. What is the length of AC? Couple things. One, because this is tangents of circles problems, AC is assumed to be a tangent. So let me identify AC here. AC is this guy, so we're gonna have to find his length eventually. But what is a tangent? A tangent is a line that touches a circle at only one place, so right there. Now, the cool thing about a tangent line is that when it connects with the radius, drawn in purple here, it creates a 90 degree angle with that tangent line. So how is this helpful for this problem? For this problem, it's useful because we can draw an additional line right through here, and now you can see that we have a triangle being formed, two triangles actually. So we have this triangle here, and we have this triangle here. So two triangles, one of which has a side, the green side is what we're looking for. But I'm actually not gonna start there because I only, I don't have any information on this triangle. I have no sides, so that's not good. So I'm gonna start with this triangle right here because it has two sides given out of three. Let's take a look at this. So if I'm gonna redraw this, notice I have this side here, that's a question mark. We're not sure what that is. Then we have this side here, that's three. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down, that's three. And then I have this bottom side, which I know is six. As we said earlier, this is our tangent line, okay? It's assumed that that is our tangent line. So we know this creates a 90 degree angle right there. Well, if we have a 90 degree angle in this triangle, that makes it a right triangle. With the right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for that missing side. So we know that six squared, which is a leg, plus three squared, which is another leg, is gonna be equal to the hypotenuse squared. So instead of calling this question mark, let's call it C, because that's the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now we have 36 plus nine equals C squared. So what is that? That's 45 summer. So been out of math for a while. Let's see, 45 equals C squared. And so C equals the square root of 45. And we're just gonna leave it the square root of 45 for now. Uh, technically, this could be simplified, even in radical form, or it could be in decimal form. But for now, it just we since this is the distance we're looking for, we can just leave it square root of 45. Okay, so now if we're looking back at this original triangle, we have one side. Now, the other thing we know is because this is a tangent line and this is a radius, okay, so that line's a radius. Well, I drew that very dark. That works. We know that this is 90 degrees because the tangent and its radius make a 90 degree angle. Well, if this is a radius, then we also know it's three. So we have square root of 45, we have three, so we can find the last leg here by using the Pythagorean theorem again. This time, it would be almost the same, except instead of C, we would have uh, square root of 45, we have uh, three there, and we would have six would be unknown. Now, if you're thinking, okay, well, we know it's six because we just did six squared plus three squared equals square root of 45, then square root of 45 minus nine squared is gonna, or excuse me, yeah, uh, minus nine is gonna give us six. So this is actually going to be six when we solve again. So that is the distance of six right there. So we just used the principles of a right triangle based on the tangent lines and then Pythagorean theorem from there to find the missing side. So you got it, onward. Next question. AC is tangent to circle O at point C. What is the measure of angle O? All right, so here we go again. Now, let's first identify our tangent line. Our tangent line, as it says, is AC. So we have AC is our tangent line. Circle O, now whenever there's a center, that is always designated by that point, which circle. So obviously O is that circle right there. Usually pretty obvious, but I thought I would mention that. What is the measure of angle O? So in this case, angle O is being referred to as that guy right there. So I'm trying to do a better job. That angle right there. And actually I'm not super satisfied with that. That is the angle we're looking for. Okay, now how do we do this? Well, we know that's a tangent line and this is a radius. We don't know the uh, length of that radius, but we don't really care because all we're interested in in this uh, example is the angle. So we have 90 degree angles there. We have 23 degree angle there. We know that in a triangle, it adds up to 180 degrees. So simply, we just need to do 180 minus 90, well, that's 90, minus 23, 
because that was there, and plus this angle X, so we can find angle X by doing 90 minus 23, or 180 minus 90 minus 23, same deal, and we get, what is that, that is 57? No, that's 67, <laughs> 67 degrees. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so 67 degrees. So we know angle O is 67 because 67 plus 23 plus 90 equals 180. So that is 67 degrees. Check it. All right, next question. All sides of quadrilateral A, B, C, D are tangent to circle P. What is the perimeter of the quadrilateral below? Okay, so we have all these tangent lines being drawn here. We have 3.3, we have 12.2. Okay, and we have a really interesting quadrilateral in place here. So how are we going to go about doing this? Hmm. Well, we know a couple things. Well, we could draw some tangent lines or to the radius. So we know that these angles are all 90 degrees. Okay. We know that, that this is 90, that this is 90, that this is 90, and that this is 90. Now, this doesn't help us that much um, unless that we use... Well, if we know that is 90 and that is 90, then we know that's a little square right there. And then we have a little kite. So hold on, let me highlight this so you know what I'm talking about. This would be a square because that's 90 and 90. No, that wouldn't be. That's just These are all just uh, different forms of a kite. However, because this is a kite, okay, so this is a kite because we have 90 degree angle here and here and unknown lengths here and here. A kite, by definition, has these opposite angles right here that are the same and the two other angles that are not the same so because all these um have opposite angles the same these are technically all different types of kites here so we have four different kites and what was my last color i guess i'll go red because all their angles are the same here here and here and here okay so they have opposite angles so these are all different kinds of kites that's a little too loaded of stuff so i'm going to erase some of it and concentrate on this yellow kite to start. Now, one of the definitions of kites is because these lengths are the same, they're both radius, uh, this length is also the same. So that is going to be 3.3 right there. Those lengths are gonna be the same. So likewise, here we go, there's the other part of my kite. We have our kite here. Those angles are the same here and here. So we know that these angles, this bit is also gonna be the same, this blue and this blue are also going to be the, uh, the same length. Now, we don't know what this is yet because we don't know this length right here. So we're going to have to come back to this blue one, actually. Let's go to a green one. I'm just going to make this green. This one should be easy to solve because we have one of the distances there. Again, here's my radius, which forms the other part of the kite. Same distance there. So the green needs to be the same distance likewise. Because this is 5.1, this part is also going to be 5.1. Now, from here, we can get a rough tally. We have 3.3 plus 5. Point, uh, let me use red, actually, because I'm going to use purple for the next one. So we have 3.3 plus 5.1. That is going to give us 8.4. We don't know this side. We need to come back to it. We already know this whole side is 12.1. That's the good news. Okay. But, and we know this whole side is 12.2. So we're only missing that side, but we need to kind of go around the whole kite to keep figuring it out. Because this is 5.1 and this whole section is 12 point, let me get my highlighter. Because this whole section is 12.1, we can just simply subtract 12.1, sorry, 5.1 from 12.1 to find that purple distance there. And that purple distance is gonna be, again, 12.1 minus 5.1. And that gives us, what is that, seven? So we know this is seven. And if that's seven, then this is also seven. Now we have one last piece of the puzzle. Consider this like, it's, it's, it's just like a puzzle. It's just like Sudoku. So now we have 12.2 minus seven to find out that blue. So we have 12.2 minus seven gives us the blue, and that's gonna be 5.2. So now this is going to be 5.2, but we still have to add that 3.3. So that total distance right there is gonna be uh, 8.5. So now we have our final distances, 8.5, 8.4, 12.1, and 12.2. So I don't have a calculator on me, so we're just going to have to do this old school. So we have 12.2 plus 12.1. That's going to give us 24.3. We're going to add 8.4 to that. And we're going to get 32.7, and then we have 8.5 to that. 
2, carry the 1. That takes us to 11, carry the 1. We have 4, 41.2. Hopefully I did that right. Otherwise, this might be embarrassing. 41.2. Let's check it out. <laughs> Got it. Woo! Close call. All right. Angle A is circumscribed about circle O. What is the measure of A? Okay, great problem to end on. I'm happy you got this. We got all the hard problems in this particular Khan Academy. What is the angle of uh, measure of angle A? Angle A is right here. Okay. Again, why do I keep using that one? Here's what I want. Okay, angle A. So here we have 65. 65 is this right here and this is a chord so notice how it doesn't go through the center so any line that doesn't go through the well i mean it can be any line that goes across the circle these are called chords okay so that's a chord now one of the properties of a chord is that if it's 65 degrees here okay then that means this angle is going to be two times 65 degrees because they end on the same place okay that's important they end in the same place so this is going to be two times 65 degrees and i think i put 66.5 i meant 65 degrees so that angle right there this red angle is going to be uh, two times 65 that's 130 so this is 130 degrees okay so if that's 130 degrees now we have almost all the information we need so here we have a tangent here's a tangent that means this is 90 degrees, 90 degrees. We're going to focus here on this quadrilateral right here. That quadrilateral needs to add up to 360. So, so far, we have two 90s, 90, 90. We have a 130. And then we have that missing angle A, angle A, which I made in red. So, I'm going to add up these three first. And that's going to be 180 plus 130. That's 310. Now, I know that... These all four need to add up to 360. So angle A needs to help us get to 360. So that's got to be 50 degrees. So 50 plus 130 plus 90 plus 90 equals 360. So angle A equals 50 degrees. And that's how we can kind of go backwards to figure that out. So 50 degrees. The chord here is probably the, the toughest part of understanding this. This chord is half the distance or half the measure of that central angle here or that's that arc uh, measure right there. Not arc length, that arc measure. So that's another thing to consider. I'm gonna make another video on that uh, later on. So if you wanna check that out, make sure to check West Explains how to do those circles. And that's it, that's all there is for Khan Academy with Tangents of Circle Problems. Hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to check out more and I'll be right here waiting for you on West Explains Best. Take care.